As some of you might be aware, I've been building on Iron Warrior's Terminator army over the past few months, and I desperately need to add some long-range firepower in the form of Siege Tyrants. The official Forge World models cost nearly $120 for five models, which is kind of crazy as they're really just cataphractic Terminators with a Cyclone Missile Launcher slapped on their back. So I set off to make my own. For the Cyclone Missile Launchers, I decided to use some spares I had left over from the Dark Angels Deathwing Terminator kit I had stashed away. These are a little pricey, at $10 a pop on eBay currently, but my competitive 40k buddies tell me these are suboptimal, so I'm willing to bet that someone in your playgroup has a few spare they can lend you. Well, give you? I don't know. They do have these giant wings on them though, that, while not strictly Dark Angels iconography, they have to go for my Iron Warriors. No son of the fourth would have anything as ostentatious as a pair of wings on their armor, and it's just way too flashy. To remove this detail, I started out by carefully scraping away the plastic with a sharp hobby knife, trying my best to not cut into the top of the missile launcher too much. As always, the sharper the knife blade you use, the easier this will be, but also, the greater the chance of seriously cutting yourself, so make sure you're careful and try to cut away from yourself if you can. Next up, I took some hobby sandpaper I picked up off Amazon and carefully sanded down the plastic until it was smooth. I actually started with a pretty coarse piece of sandpaper, which really helped to get all the excess plastic off and smooth down the top of the missile launcher, but left a pretty rough texture that looked terrible when painted. So I moved to a slightly finer grit for a few passes, and then did a few more with a super fine grit of sandpaper to make the plastic very smooth and look like the wings were never even there. One trick that I've found when sanding this way, though, is it really helps to roll up your sandpaper like I'm doing here, as it gives you far more control than trying to use a single piece of thin paper. I also wanted to point out that when doing this detail removal, there's always a chance that you'll accidentally gouge out more of the plastic or resin than you mean to, kind of like I did here. This is pretty easy to fix though, with a few simple steps and tools you should already have around. To start with, I use a sharp knife blade to scratch up the area I want to fix, as the modeling putty I'll be using next has a hard time sticking perfectly to smooth plastic. For the putty, I actually use a mix of 50-50 green stuff and epoxy sculpt, I found this combination works really well for both the gap filling we're doing here, as well as some of the more detailed sculpting I'll be doing later on this model. This is because the green stuff adds some stickiness to the putty mix, while the epoxy sculpt dries super hard and is easily sandable. So if you just use green stuff, it wouldn't sand as well, but if you just used epoxy sculpt, there's a high probability it wouldn't actually stick to the model and flake off too. So by mixing them together, I get the best features of both putties without sacrificing on either of them. This mixture is then applied over the gouge, and I use a finger dipped in water to smooth out the putty and blend it into the surrounding plastic. It's okay if this blend isn't perfectly smooth though, as after the putty dries, I apply the same sanding process as before to create a consistent texture with barely noticeable edges between the plastic and putty. Once this is primed and painted up, it will not be noticeable at all. After this was done, I assembled the rest of the missile launcher normally. There's one additional detail here that's pretty minor, but it's clearly Dark Angel's sword on the top of the missile launcher, so I also carefully carved it out, and the missile launcher was pretty much done. For the main portion of the Terminators, I used the plastic cataphracty kit. To reproduce the official segmented metal crotch plates, I took the boring, old-fashioned leather crotch straps from the plastic kit and shaved them down so that a fairly flat piece of plastic under the belt buckle. I opted to shave this down instead of straight cutting it off, as I found that it's far easier to sculpt over an already rigid surface than to try to build this up again. Much like with the missile launcher before, I scraped this up with my hobby knife so the putty would stick better. And also, much like before, I used the same mixture of 50-50 epoxy sculpt and green stuff. This is then placed on the cut down dangly thing and flattened to the thickness I want. Next. I use a sharp knife to carefully trim out the trapezoidal shape I'm looking for. When doing sculpting like this, I'd highly recommend that you do one armor piece at a time and let it fully cure before moving on to the next one, as it greatly reduces the risk of you accidentally sticking a finger or knife blade into something you've already finished and messing it up. Once all four segments are done, I lightly sand them down to ensure they're all flat and roughly the same thickness, and then I move on to the small connector pieces between the plates. This part is definitely not needed, but I did it on my first squad of five already, so I might as well keep doing it for continuity's sake. All I really do here though, is roll up a thin tube of green stuff, press it into the armor place where I want the connectors to be, and carefully cut out the parts I don't want remaining, leaving just the appearance of metal connectors tying the segmented plates together. 
Sometimes some of these connectors fall off though while cutting due to improper adherence of the green stuff to the green stuff below it. In this case, don't try to fix it immediately, but go back once the original connectors are dry and do a little small piece to finish it off. Once this is all said and done, I used a fresh hobby blade to cut out the excess plastic behind the armor plates. And when I was doing this, one of the pieces of green stuff fell off that was easily fixed with just a little bit of super glue and a steady hand. I decided not to mess around with the legs on this kit bash and assemble them as normal. For the torso, however, I did decide to add a little more bulk to distinguish them from the rest of the cataphractic terminators in my army. And to do this, I started off by removing all of the trim on the lower torso in much the same way as before. Continuing my theme of referring you back to previous moments in this video, I next scuffed up the surface of the armor with my X-Acto knife. I then added a thin layer of my green stuff and epoxy sculpt mix on top of this and smoothed it out with a finger dipped in water so that it sat flush with the collar. When doing this, I found that it's far easier to smooth out your putty first to get a nice even layer and then cut away the excess with a sharp blade while it's still uncured. Also, when you do cut away the excess putty, make sure you cut out the piece over the arm connectors or else the rest of the model might not go together correctly. In order to really push the up armored, bulky yet functional look, I decided to add another layer of ablative armor bolted onto one side of the torso. I love how this looks when finished, and you can alter where this extra armor goes across your squad to add some variance, much like I did with this complete squad here. This was also super easy to do, as all it really was was to add another layer of my putty mixture in much the same way as before on only one side of the torso, cutting out this small piece here to get a nice crisp line. Once this was dry, I then used these rivets from Zint Industries to go for a countersunk bolted-on look. To do this, all I did was drill a shallow hole with a larger drill bit, I think about two millimeters, and then a much deeper hole with a smaller drill bit for the rivet post to sit in. This way, I went to place the rivet into the drill dot cavity. It'd be countersunk to the depth of the first larger drilling, but still have the post go all the way through to get a nice firm grip. Some of my more frequent viewers might also notice a lot of similarities between what I did on this model and what I did with my Indominus Terminators 430K a couple of months ago. If you haven't seen the video though, I'll link it in the description below so you can see a couple more examples of these additional armor plates and other ways you can add bonding studs onto your Terminators. After detailing the left side of the torso, I felt that the right side was a little bit too plain. So I took one of these Zinj Industry cable connectors and drilled out a large hole for it to slide into. I think I used about a, I don't know, three millimeter drill bit. I'd have a bit of trouble here with the green stuff wanting to pull away from the plastic when using my pin vise. That was easily fixed with a drop of super glue and a little bit of pressure. With the torso out of the way, really the last part to worry about is how to attach the missile launcher to the roof of the Terminator plate. As I'm sure many of you have seen, I'm actually fairly lazy with my conversions. So all I did here was really scrape off this bump on the back, then take a spare blob of putty and squish the missile launcher onto the Terminator armor. Once the putty had dried, I popped the missile launcher off and cut down the putty blob so it looks a little less organic and a little more uh, right angly. Let's be honest though, no one's ever actually gonna look at your mounting bracket for your missile launcher on these terminators that closely. So really the goal here is just to make sure you have a place to firmly sit the missile launcher itself. Despite the advice I literally just gave, I decided to take this part even more seriously and sculpted a couple of flat rectangles to the front and back of the cut down bracket better blend in the top of the Terminator armor. Let me know in the comments below though if you think this is a waste of time or actually helps the appearance of the finished model. After gluing the launcher back to the Terminator, I was a little bothered with this gap here between the sensor and the armor itself. So I decided to use some steel wire to create cabling to hide this gap. This part was rather finicky and I hate working with pieces this small, but I think it really adds to the overall detailing of the model and looks pretty good. It also helps to hide the gap between the targeter and the top of the armor, so it's just a little more cohesive and tied together. The rest of the model is built fairly normally from the plastic cataphracty kit, with the only exception being that I added some resin iron warrior shoulder pads. Of course, this is optional and doesn't really add a ton to the finished model that you can't do with decals. But I had already added sculpted shoulder pads to the rest of my Tyrant Siege Terminator squad, so I wanted this one to match. After that, all I really needed to do was attach the segmented crotch protector and the model was done. All in all, this model cost $7 for the plastic cataphracty, $10 for the cyclone missile launcher, and let's say maybe $3 in Zinj industry bits and green stuff. 
giving us a grand total of $20 for this model as compared to $24 for the official Forge World one. A large chunk of this cost, though, is driven by the missile launcher bits. So if you had them already from another project, like I did, or of a buddy who doesn't need them, the cost of this project goes way down. Hopefully this video inspired you to try your hand at your own kid bashes, and I'd love to see what y'all come up with, so feel free to shoot me some pictures, either through email or Instagram, both of which are linked below. Also, if you want to see how I painted these guys, I have an Iron Warriors painting tutorial up that you can check out here. As always, thanks for watching, and hobby on.